Hello everyone, um, my name is Lawrence Salai August uh, uh, and I am uh, presenting to you uh, dramatic arts revision videos. Um, but aim to help you as a grade 12 learner with um, your grade 12 uh, exams. Um, so <laughs> if my PC stops acting up, um, I can continue this recording. Okay, great. My PC is working perfectly. So uh, my name is Lance Lai August, as I mentioned, and um, the purpose of these exam sessions is to help you prepare for your final grade 12 exams. We live in a time where there is uncertainty around when we are going back to school and things like that. And that's why we are here to help you prepare optimally. So today's session looks specifically at the history of theater as well as practical concepts and a reflection of your dramatic arts journey. Uh, these videos are made by um, the Amatkawe Collective. The Amatkawe Collective is a non-profit organization that um, is uh, aimed at, you know, making or creating theater for change. So in today's session, as I mentioned, we will be looking at uh, Section D from the NAC uh, National Sing Certificate November 2018 paper, looking specifically at um, the history of theatre, practical concepts, as well as some content and skills taken from your dramatic arts journey uh, from grade 10 to grade 12. Okay, so, um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, that we are going through a, a past paper. Section D of, of the paper is always asking you to, um, you know, sort of reflect on everything that you've learned. It's always an all-encompassive question that asks you to reflect on what you learned, um, to apply all of your knowledge and things like that. And uh, the specific question is, uh, say, question eight out of this question paper, and it's a compulsory question. And it's asking you uh, to study source H below and answer the questions that follow. Um, let me just open a, yeah, a, 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 a tool that can help me. So you see in front of you a poster. It says, a new play by Eve Ensler. It's directed by Joe Boney with music by Carl Johan Lingenfelder. It's for a play called Emotional Creature, The Secret Life of Girls Around the World. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Emotional Creature is a production created by Eve Ensler, and it deals with the challenging issues faced by girls around the world, and it is made up of monologues poems and prose pieces and it is performed by an all girl cast um, the specific poster is used to promote an upcoming um an upcoming uh showcase of of this production so you may or may not be drawn to this poster based uh, purely on its presentation you may be drawn to the play because um eve ensler joe boney uh, are, you know, well-known um, theatre makers. You could be drawn to the fact that there's music in the play. You could be drawn to the fact that there are some different design elements in this poster. You could not be drawn to it because it makes an inference that girls are, you know, emotional beings or emotional creatures, or the fact that it's black and white, or the fact that this promotes this place, this poster is being used to promote the upcoming play, but you don't know where it's going to be staged, when it's going to be staged, how much it's going to cost and things like that um, from the explanation you can already make inferences that you would <laughs> anticipate the question around monologues poems and prose pieces you sort of need to know what those are and perhaps information linked to the fact that it's performed by an all girl cast um, yeah so now after you've studied the source you can uh, now go on to the questions Question 8.1.1, ah, explain the differences between monologues, poems, and prose pieces. It's very important to always look at what the question is asking you. And the question is not asking you to define what monologues, poems, and prose pieces are. The question is asking you to explain the differences, the differences between the three. And that counts six marks. So the key difference between a monologue a poem and a prose piece is the structure it's its structure so now you can already know now you can already make 
an assumption that you are going to write about the structure of a monologue, the structure of poem versus the structure of a prose piece. And let's see what sort of answers you can write. Monologue, it's spoken, it's a speech spoken by one person and it's usually from a play. Uh, it's different to a dialogue, which you know is text spoken between two people or more. A poem, the structure of a poem is stylized. It uses stylized language to express emotions or ideas. You can really see the structural difference is a monologue is speech, whereas a poem is a body of stylized language. <laughs> and then prose. Prose is language in sentence format. It consists of dialogue as well as narration. And it is usually in the form of story. Telling. It could be written in the first person and it's usually from a short story or any other text and it is not from a play text. Monologue is a speech, poem is a body of stylized language and prose is language in a sentence format that um, consists of dialogue as well as narration and it is usually in the form of a story. So there you have explained the structural differences between monologues, poems, and prose pieces, and that would get you your six marks. Question 8.1.2 asks you to assess whether the source, the pick the poster in source H would be successful or not to advertise the production for four marks. Uh, what does assess mean? Assess is, means that you need to evaluate, you need to make a judgment on whether the poster is successful. And because it's asking you to make a judgment, it's asking you to uh, substantiate why or why not. So that means you can say, yes, it is successful, but you need to give us reasons. Or you can say, no, it's not successful, but you need to give us reasons as well. So let's have a look at that poster again. Yes, <clears throat> uh, you see it's a new play by Eve Ensler, uh, directed by Joe Boney with music by Charles Johann Lingenfelder. Uh, it's called Emotional Creature, The Secret Life of Girls Around the World. <clears throat> it's in black and white and things like that. So now we can go back to uh, what the question is asking you again. You could say that the post is successful and <clears throat> these are some of the reasons that you could give. Um, it includes the name of the playwright, a, a well-known theatre practitioner. So you might be drawn to that. It makes use of interesting design elements like fonts. That is also something you might be drawn to. Or um, you could be drawn to the fact that the production, it mentions that the production contains music. So those are reasons why the poster could be successful. On the other hand, it could possibly not be successful because it portrays women as emotional and unstable. It says, um, emotional creature, the secret life of girls around the world. Um, girls as emotional creatures, girls as emotional beings, girls as creatures. Creatures are usually a hideous thing. <clears throat> that is the sort of inference that the play is making about, about girls. So um, <clears throat> if you see that and you interpret that, you might not be drawn to the play based on that. You might also not be drawn to the poster because the poster is printed in black and white. And I mean, obviously, color appeals to us. <clears throat> and then also, uh, it doesn't consist of performance details such as the date, the time, and how much tickets cost and things like that. Where is this play going to be staged? How much is it going to be cost? You know, what time of the day is it going to be staged? Can I even go? You need to know that information before you make a judgment. So if you don't see that, I know personally, I don't see that. Um, so I'm not going to be drawn to the poster. So I would assess that it is not <coughs> successful. And those would be some of my reasons why. And that is how you would get your four marks. 8.1.3. <coughs> Give the production another suitable title and a hashtag. Motivate your answer. So you need to give it a suitable title, you need to give it the hashtag, and you need to motivate. And that would, is what would give you your four marks. Um, so I, I, I would give you an example of the sort of story or the sort of name I would give. I would say our girls, our stories. Uh, it gives it the South African edge. What does our refer to? It refers to our South African girls. Uh, <coughs> um, a hashtag I would give, I would say hashtag girls and stories. 
and then also I would motivate why I would give it that title. I'm writing this uh, out of the South African context, and that is why uh, I'm calling it Our Girls. The word Our refers to South African. So you would get one mark for the title, you would get one mark for the hashtag, and you would get two marks for the motivation. All right, so continuing, we are now looking at uh, question 8.2. Question 8.2 is asking you to study source I below and then answer the questions that follow. So it's very much like a comprehension style question. Or is it? We'll see. Um, I'm going to read you the source. It is a poem, it seems. Um, I am an emotional creature by Eve Ensler. I love being a girl. I can feel what you're feeling as you're feeling it inside, the feeling before. I am an emotional creature. Things do not come to me as intellectual theories or heart-shaped ideas. I am an emotional creature. I am connected to everything and everyone. I was born like that. Don't you dare say all negative that it's a teenage thing or it's only because I'm a girl. These things make me feel better. They make me ready. They make me present. They make me strong. So, <clears throat> after reading that, the question is now based on this extract. The question is, you and your class have decided to perform this extract. This question is very much an application question uh, from the play Emotional Teacher, and you are performing it at the local Youth Day celebration. It's asking you to describe your ideas on how to stage the extract, how are you going to stage it, and what is its relevance to a Youth Day celebration. In your answer, you have to refer to um, the vocal and physical performance, and as well as technical and theatrical elements, as well as the relevance to Youth Day. Do not forget that. And then <clears throat> that will give you 10 marks. A question like this uh, requires you to write a longer response um, so you aren't necessarily looking here at, you know, bullet point answers. No, you need to write some sort of structured response. So if you look at the vocal and physical performance, what is the sort of ideas that come to mind? You could say that the group could choose uh, the, uh, to perform the extract as a, as a choral piece. You know, there's strength in performing a piece of text like this in choral verse. It means that it's a lot of girls united. It, brings, <coughs> it could bring about a stronger message of unity. You could use individual voices um, to portray different lines in this um, <clears throat> monologue or poem, whatever it is. I can't really discern what it is. Um, individual voices might be used. Um, each performer, you know, performing this would embody a sort of different emotion. If you think back to grade 11 and Stanislavski, what is the sort of emotional connection that you are going to put into your performance? Um, you could also obviously play with various vocal elements such as song, pitch, the pace at which you speak, the volume and stuff like that. <clears throat> and then you could also include some physicality. There could be movement, there could be gestural language, there could be dance, there could be physical theatre. Those are all of the <clears throat> ideas that you could write in your answer for how to stage this from a vocal or physical point of view. The second part of the question is asking you to refer to the technical and theatrical elements uh, that you would use in the play. And if you think of the technical and the if you think of the technical and the theatrical elements, you know you really need to be thinking about sound and light and set and you know all of those technical things. So lighting and sound might be used to enhance the performance. That is a given. You need some lighting. You need some sound. It sets an ambiance lighting, of course. Sound heightens the performance. Performers might choose to use multimedia and perform the whole piece on screen as if they are all over the world. That would be interesting. Um, uh, it means that you add another dimension to the performance. You are extending the performance to not just be on stage, but also in an audiovisual format. 
visual imagery and sound effects might enhance the uh, theatrical impact visual imagery in the form of you know physical theater forum theater i think you do forum theater in grade 11 if i'm not mistaken where you touch on forum theater uh, physical theater um you know images with your body sound effects and that is not just artificial sound effects it's actually sound effects that you could create with your voice that could also <coughs> um, enhance the the theatrical impact groups might play live musical instruments or use recorded music yes very much true uh, you could also use microphones depending on the size of the venue if it's a massive venue microphones are preferred if it's a smaller venue like the standard theater space you as an actor need to use the dramatic art skills that you learned from grade 10 to 12 to project honey yeah and that's all that i'm saying on that and you could use the theater space creatively what am i referring to here um like in terms of like how are you going to stage it are you going to stage it as you know a a a, a um typical uh audience setup where the theater where the audience is facing the the actors um the the term is 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 leaving me now Ugh. or you could also stage it creatively you could do like theater in the round where <coughs> the audience is placed around um the performance space the chairs are around the performance space and you are dead in the middle what is the sort of effect that different staging conventions will have also will it be uh poor theater will there be no set at all will it uh be will it have an elaborate set you need to as if it's realism um you need to be able to motivate uh the things you say and then the last part of this question is asking you to say what the relevance at a youth day event would be and there once again you need to justify and apply your mind um i would hypothetically say that girls growing up are very much part of the future and it's important that girls sitting in the audience get to hear about these experiences uh so that they can sort of I don't know better themselves so that they can sort of be aware of the troubles that girls face or girls go through as they grow older and things like that and um you would uh that would complete the 10 mark question name one other performance item that would reflect the messages and culture of youth day celebrations in south africa motivate your answer and you would get four marks here so in terms of one performance and one other performance item they are asking for like <coughs> what kind of what other performance can you include at the same youth day celebration that brings about that south african experience remember youth day brings about a certain uh, a, a certain feeling in us as south africans uh, in 1976 on the 16th of june uh, people went to go march in Soweto against um, <clears throat> Afrikaner education or Bantu education and they basically you know went through that experience so that we as you know youth today could have a better um, educational experience and that brings about a sense of pride that there are people that thought of us that wanted that lay down their lives for us to have a better future and that brings about a sense of pride and you express that pride not just through theater but through many other forms as dancing there could be a, a little dancing performance where you could do gambu dancing is it katamiya dancing um toy toy hip-hop you know and it's, it's uplifting and unifying because it's energized it's rhythmical and it's artistic so it could bring about that sense of pride um associated with this day um <laughs> drumming as well drumming usually creates a powerful atmosphere of unity among the crowd drumming sets the tone the atmosphere so drumming at the the sort of event would also be very very cool um singing singing is also something that is uplifting you could sing choral songs praise singing you know chants traditional music that sort of thing <clears throat> you could also refer to poetry uh, slam poetry or choral verse or even praise poetry because praise poetry is, is is something that's very dare i say indigenous to our country and it would carry that you know that powerful and that that moving message across about youth day and the youth experience and then also um there could be a live band or live music of any kind because music also moves the masses music also unites all of these have this you know this purpose of uniting us and instilling a sense of pride in us and then also to bring it back to what we know you could also perform short extracts of other plays um of other relevant plays um or perform monologues from 
you know, movies and even stage productions like Sarafina. Sarafina is very much based around this whole, you know, youth day concept. Yeah. And that is how you would get your four marks for that question. Okay, so now we are moving on to question um, 8.4, which is also the last question in this paper. And it's also an essay-based question. Uh, they give you a quote. Uh, Theatre is able to move people emotionally to talk about issues and also to inspire social revolution. And this quote was given to you by Eve Ensler. Um, yeah, there are three things that she mentions here. To move people emotionally, talk about issues and inspire social revolution so you can sort of already see or make an inference that you'd have to refer to each of those statements in your answer whatever your question is the question is to discuss <clears throat> eve's uh observation about theater to discuss now it means that you need to uh say whether you agree or disagree with the statement well it is, uh, yeah dis agree or disagree with the statement um uh, give your thoughts on how theatre moves people emotionally, how theatre talks about issues, and how theatre inspires social revolutions. It's also saying that you must refer to any play or theatre movement or theatre practitioner that you have studied. And um, it's also saying that you mustn't refer to the same genre or dramatic movement that you discussed in question one. We obviously didn't look in question one, but question one usually looks at, you know, the 21st century, the 20th century isms and stuff like that. So hypothetically, if you discover, if you discuss realism, in question one, don't discuss realism in this question. <clears throat> so, theater, how does theater move people emotionally? So, theater's power uh, lies in the ability to connect in its immediate, immediacy with the audience. The audience is there while it's being performed. And while you are performing, the audience builds a connection with what is being performed. And um, the audience, uh, the uh, uh, theater has the ability to manipulate the audience member's emotional state through the semiotics of theater. What are semiotics? Semiotics are um, signs and symbols. I can't write with this thing. Let me just see. Signs and symbols. <laughs> I just felt like playing the but So semiotics are the signs and symbols used on stage. So signs and symbols could be <coughs> with a visual and or and oral imagery, the sounds the performers make, the the visuals that you see on stage, uh, and that is brought about through the actor's voice and through the actor's body. It's a that that has the ability to alter your emotional state. So basically, the audience engages with what is being performed on stage uh, in a deep uh, uh, psychological level with the play. Uh, they, they engage with the play on a deep psychological level, and that is what be that is what alters your state of being by the time you leave the theater. You don't go in. You don't leave the theater the same way you are feeling uh, as when you um, came into the theater. That is basically what it means to how theater moves people emotionally and a discussion like this would easily give you um, <coughs> uh, four marks. Theater has the ability to um, <coughs> talk about issues. So uh, theater sort of provides this ground through which you are able to address subject matter. If the theater is about, if the theater production is about the politics of hair, then So, as I was saying, as a production has, the production, you know, um, 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 discusses certain subject matter and it, it sort of provides this foundation through which you can now discuss, um, you know, what this play is about. If the play is about the politics of here, something that you weren't necessarily comfortable discussing. Now you can discuss it because you went to go see a play on the politics of here. So that is um, essentially um, what this point refers to. Um, <coughs> The boot topics otherwise unspoken in society are aired and given a voice on stage. And essentially what it is saying is that theater stimulates talk and conversation between audience members, you know, after a show. It also means that, you know, if there are topics that are taboo in, in the family context, if you as a family or you with your family went to go see a particular play, it means that you guys can now, you know, sort of, you know, discuss those issues because the play that you saw laid the foundation about 
that subject matter. Um, also, the play itself addresses issues that might go unspoken of in everyday life, hypothetically. It's not often that you would think about, you know, the, 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 the way that you can display culture through the food that you eat. And hypothetically, if you see a play based on that, this play now opens up the world to you as an audience member, which means that you can now go and talk of that particular thing that you would otherwise have been unaware about. And then lastly, theater is uh, wants to inspire social revolution. Theater addresses some sort of wrong in society that they want you to go and address. Theater mobilizes you to action. Uh, the power of theatre to speak to issues which affect personal, social and political arenas of society can shift the mindsets and it, it can change your heart and thought and mobilize an effect outside the theatre in society, thereby creating a social revolution. And a perfect um, play that you can refer here to is Wuzza Albert. We all know what Wuzza Albert is about if Wuzza Albert was one of the texts that you studied, but it very much speaks about, you know, waiting for Morena to come because Morena is going to save us from, you know, this state of, you know, racial discrimination and things like that that we are in. Uh, so most playwrights, productions and uh, plays are actually created for this purpose of, of, you know, sort of affecting and effecting change in society. And a um, person that you can refer here to is Bertolt Brecht. So that brings us to the end of uh, uh, today's session. Um, this was a perfect question because it sort of had needed you to apply everything that you've learned throughout grade 10 to grade 12 to be able to answer this question in a comprehensive manner. Um, the next session that we'll be doing, we'll be looking at Waza Albert specifically. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Lance Salai August, and you have watched grade 12 Dramatic Arts Revision, powered by... The Amakawe Collective. Goodbye.